Have you heard about the mysteries around the unblemished red heifers for the temple ceremony that will soon come of age? We're going to provide clarity on the red heifers and debunk some misconceptions, including if they had anything to do with the Hamas-Israel war that began on October 7th. All of this and more today on The End Time Show. Welcome to the End Time Show. Vince Stegall here with Doug Norvell. We're taking your calls today. The number to join us is 877-END-TIME, 877-363-8463. Give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we're going to discuss a little controversial subject today, it seems, the red heifer. I've seen some comments from you all on our TikToks and YouTube shorts, and uh, some think that we are absolutely crazy to be talking about this, but we're going to go over some of the misconceptions and see what happens from there. Doug? What's better than having a nice hot cup of coffee, especially from First Cup? Having two. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking birthday cake. Oh, well, that was really good, too. We, we finally birthday. celebrated birthdays yes, for January uh, in office here. <laughs> Man, did we. And uh, you were one of them. Yes. So I know that people are sick of me bringing that up, at least a few. Mm. But uh, we did celebrate your birthday today here. Yeah. Sang to you. Mm -hmm. um, as well as your wife Tina and a few mm -hmm. other team members here. Yeah. So Tina's birthday was uh, Saturday. So yeah. So some people missed Doug's birthday and Tina's birthday. So mm -hmm. this isn't about you today. No. Put in the comments. It's about everybody. Happy birthday, Tina, and let her know how loved she is. <laughs> um, I know you love her a lot. Doug. I do. Yeah. Well, it was really good, especially with some first cup coffee. We drank the Boston Common this afternoon. First Cup's a Christian-owned Patriot coffee company out of the great state of Texas. They've got 11 different roasts, each one named after a specific piece of American history. Of course, the Boston Common, one of them. You get one of their roasts, ground whole bean, or even pods for your Keurig machine. So ditch the grocery store coffee that's been sitting there for two years. It's not that good anyway. Go to firstcup.com, use code ENDTIME to get 10% off. If you subscribe, they'll give you another 10% off. Firstcup.com, use code ENDTIME to get 10% off today and say happy birthday Tina in the comments. All right, Doug, red heifers, this is a hot subject. Mm -hmm. We do TikToks and YouTube shorts and reels on Instagram about the red heifer and right. it always gets a lot of engagement, a lot of views. People are wanting to know what in the world's going on with these red heifers. Well, the thing is we have a really good update today because uh, some information came out, uh, it's about a week ago it really came out, but it came across my uh, screen this past weekend and I got to see it and it's really good so we're going to show some clips from an, a couple of interviews there along with some new information on it and then also today Vince they had a uh, a gathering for prayer and repentance in uh, Washington DC and so evangelical Christians and Jewish people came together there in Washington and they discussed a lot of things. Well, Byron Stinson, the gentleman from Texas, who our friend, uh, our friend, you've seen on the program with Dave, um, he was there along with uh, some some Jewish members there that we're going to talk about today. A rabbi, uh, in particular, that we're going to mention a lot today because there's a lot of prophetic things uh, that we're bringing to the table about what's going on. So. As Christians, you know, we might look at this and not even realize what's going on. I mean, a lot of Christians may not even understand the significance of a red heifer. Right. Um, you know, I had an interesting conversation with my family this weekend, you know. and, and Doug, that's dangerous. I know not it is. Not just your family, but talking to family in general about some of this. It really you is. You create enemies fast that Man, way. Man, I'm telling you. But since you got past the holidays, here you are. You got several months before you got to deal with that again. Right. So <laughs> safe. <laughs> Yeah, so we we had a, a small gathering and, and we talked about it a little bit and I was explaining it. They had no idea that there was any red heifers. They didn't even understand why there would be a need for a red heifer and why it would be prophetic in nature. And so I explained a lot of that to them. And so I felt like, man, this is a great time. We need to really to talk about this uh, because it is all the buzz right now in Israel. So. Anyway, there is a lot going on with it, and, you know, it's in Numbers 19, and that's where we find it in the Bible. Well, I'm glad you brought up the Scripture. I know people will ask about that, but quickly, I want to ask that I, a question that I don't think is in our notes today. Um, as a Christian, red heifers, are they significant for us as Christians at all? 
Well, n not in a spiritual sense. I mean, it means nothing to us. It's a purification for Israel, for the Jewish people who are keeping the law. We are not under the law now. We're under the dispensation of grace. And we know that we are truly the temple of God. We're told in Scripture that, you know, we are the temple of God now. Well, there is still going to be a physical temple. And it's one thing that a lot of people don't understand, that there will be a physical temple in Israel. And because of that fact, it's very significant for that third temple to be built. They have to have this red heifer. Actually, they have to have the ashes of this red heifer. And that's what we're going to talk about today is why it's significant uh, to them and, and what it means for the temple mount. And then look at some other things that have happened recently just because there are red heifers. So it's not just Christians and Jews that understand the significance of the red heifer, but also Islam understands its significance. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Islam, under that's an interesting perspective, Doug. I've asked a question about that personally and been uh, scalded, I guess you could say. And in a sense, yes. Yeah, but uh, that we'll save that for later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so as a Christian... The red heifers are not necessary for us in regards to being born again. Right. You look through the book of Acts, you look through the epistles, we're not seeing the need for a red heifer in regards to us being born again or serving the Lord or walking in discipleship at this point. So, exactly. um, but it is significant in the sense that we see in Revelation that there is a temple that's built on the Temple Mount. There are sacrifices that happen again. The Antichrist is going to stand there and proclaim to be God and that these sacrifices don't have to happen anymore. Right. So there are prophecies that we know are down the pike, on the way, and um, in order for those to happen, I guess they're going to need a red heifer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the red heifer in itself, um, it is it's only part of what they have to have for this. And it is uh, for the purification for Israel. And so really, Vince, technically, anybody that is a Jewish person going up on the Temple Mount is supposed to be purified by the ashes of this red heifer. And this, um, it's, it's actually like a, um, you know, it's a ceremony. Mm -hmm. It's a cleansing ceremony that they go through. It's not really a sacrifice. We think of it as a sacrifice, but it's really a ceremony so that they can get to the ashes and then therefore cleanse people uh, from, you know, being in contact with a dead body or in, unpure in any kind of way. And it's also for like a cleansing of their sins as well. So it was done in the tabernacle era. It's when it started. And we're going to kind of look at the history of it through these videos that we've got, these clips we've got today, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Now, Doug, you mentioned that um, we're going to talk about the significance of Islam and what they think of these red heifers. Mm -hmm. And I want to remind everybody that Dave and Jana Robbins will be in Justin, Texas this weekend. Dave's actually teaching a brand new lesson called The Green Horseman, which ties into Islam. Um, but it's The Green Horseman and World War III. And you're going to hear a lot about Islam and how they are involved in this coming war that's going to kill a third of mankind. Uh, Dave and Jana Robbins, again, they'll be in Justin, Texas this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Go to endtime.com slash events to learn more about that or give us a call at 800-END-TIME. They would love to see you, have, have you come out and uh, chat with them and be a part of the conference there in Justin. So make plans for that. Uh, also, we need your help. Share this video. Comment. Uh, not just happy birthday, Tina, but comment what you're thinking about uh, in regards to the subject. This is not a replay. People are asking, is this a replay or is yeah. it live? We are live, Doug. We are live. What day is it today? Today is January 31st, there we 2024. Go. We are, it's 3.08 Central Time. We are live <laughs> and we need your help. Share this video, comment, let us know what you're thinking about the subject matter today, and then also give us that red heart, not just the blue thumbs up. Uh, that goes a long way in breaking through the algorithms to get to your friends and family. This is a subject that everyone needs to know about, Jew, Christian, uh, doesn't matter what your belief is. Uh, you need to know about the red heifers because there is some tie to future events that are coming. So share this video to help us get the word out. Now, Doug, you mentioned Numbers 19. Yeah. Are we ready to go there? How are we going to tackle Yeah, that? if we just read this part, it kind of bring us down into the other elements besides just the red heifer that needs to be done. So I thought we could read this. If somebody wants to go back and read Numbers, the entire chapter is about this situation. So Okay. So you want to start in verse 1. Yeah, let's do that it, through verse 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. 
and ye shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face, and Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times, and one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh and her blood with her dung shall be burned, and the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. So Vince, that last verse there, it says that they have to have cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet. So these are significant items. I was talking to uh, one of our production crew today, Landon, about uh, some, some similarities here to the cross and what Christ did for us. And also all the way back to the first Passover because we've got, you know, a lot of people believe that the cross was made out of cedar wood. We know that at least part of it was. We know that at, for sure uh, the, the part where the feet would have been mounted to on the cross, that that was cedar wood. You can look that up and see that a lot of people believe that. And then hyssop, or hyssop was used uh, at Passover, remember, they took the blood from the, the lamb that they sacrificed and they, they put it on the door, uh, above the door and on the sides, like in the shape of the cross, they did this with the hyssop. And then, of course, the scarlet color, uh, when you think about that, you're, you think about the blood and the cleansing element there. So it, it is a lot of things there. He brought up some good points as we were talking about that, and it's interesting. But the thing about this is there's been nine red heifers from the time of Moses, 270 AD when the second temple was destroyed. So there's been nine of them. There has not been one for 2,000 years. Now, Rabbi uh, Heim Richman, who we know here, he used to be over the Temple, uh, the temple Institute, I think until 2020, and then he, he went on. He started this red heifer program in 1996. That's how long they've been looking for a red heifer. So I think we talked before that people were saying, oh, I've been hearing that there's a red heifer my whole life. Well, no, you haven't because they just started looking for it in 1996. Maybe they're young that are saying that. But, you know, I mean, they've been looking. They haven't had one until yeah. now. So that's the interesting thing. They've had some prospects that always ended up with a blemish or the white hairs would come out or something would happen. And the, and the blemish would come very early. Yes. I don't remember. I mean, we are a little over a month away. Mm -hmm. from this red heifer being sacrificed. as They're, they're going to do it uh, Passover, right? Right, right. That's, That's one of the big things we're going to uh, talk about is that it's actually going to happen either on Passover or on Pentecost, they're saying. So two very significant days for Israel. So we're talking about April or we're talking about, I think, June uh, of this year. So yeah. it's going to happen this year. Well, and if, if you don't realize it, this is the last day of January. Right. It is February tomorrow. Yeah. We are just months away. Yeah. And, and I heard reports today as I was listening to different things and watching different things. The, they were actually ready on the Day of Atonement back in 2023. They were actually the right age, but the priests have put it off and waited this long to do it at Passover, specifically around that time. I believe it's probably going to happen at Passover, uh, but they said that it could happen as, as late as Pentecost. So, so we'll wait and see which one it happens at. Uh, the thing about it is the, this red heifer um, is very significant. They've been searching for it. They finally had five. Remember, they got 20-something, really, but they could only send five to Israel. So one ended up... Like we were talking about, it got white hairs or had blemishes or something. But they it, now they have four that are still kosher. And those all are they all need from is Rockwall. One. They're all from Rockwall. Just a few miles from here. Yeah, which is, I mean, it's right down the road, really. And, and Dave was able to go there. You've heard uh, Dave's interview uh, with Byron Stinson, and they talked about it. Uh, he went, he met Byron, he met Ty. He said even Ty's dog's red. But uh, we, we have a great <laughs> clip. No, before we get, Doug, I, I yeah. want to say that uh, one thing that I've learned so far today, mm -hmm. I think I've asked you this in the past, and I don't remember if we knew, but according to the scripture, it doesn't sound like, it sounds like they burned the whole red heifer. Yes. We, we wondered if they would uh, take the meat that's good for eating and, and use that accordingly. And it doesn't appear from the scripture that they're going to do that. No, and we'll learn that in one of the videos. We're going to kind of look at that a little bit. And I'm going to give you some statistics of what they do. And that's why the wood and the scarlet is very important in the ceremony. 
So, so we'll see when we get there here in a little bit, we'll kind of read through that and see why that's significant. And you're going to be amazed at the numbers of, of what can, can be done with the ashes of this uh, red heifer. So one thing we know is that that red heifer would not be good for our friends over at Backyard Butchers. Not at all. No <laughs> ribeyes are coming out of the red heifer. 100% mm -mm. sacrificed. Uh, go to BackyardButchers.com. They're saying no thank you to the Klaus Schwab global agenda that says you should eat 3D printed steaks. They're delivering American raised and harvested meat, which the red heifers are, but they're not using them at Backyard Butcher. Uh, they're delivering them from right here in our American backyards to dinner tables across our nation. Go to BackyardButchers.com and save an extra 20% off your entire order by using the code ENDTIME. With over a half a million happy customers, they'll make sure your orders are delivered right on time every single month. Go to BackyardButchers.com slash ENDTIME, buy American meat today and get 20% off your entire order. And Doug, I know you just did and you're going to be branding it with that uh, brand that uh, John from Tennessee sent us. So I can't wait to yes. see the results of that. Yeah, a couple now, there's weeks. A, there's a clip from Michael Samuel Smith mm -hmm. with Ty Davenport, who is that rancher from Rockwall. Is that correct? That's correct. Are we ready to go to that? Yeah, let's go to that and hear how they found this red app. All right, here we go. Byron Simpson and said, can you show us your cattle? And I said, well, sure. And so as we started going around, they told me what they were looking for. And I told him, I said, you know, wow, well, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll look and, and see if we have what you want. And we're just about giving up. We'd seen a lot of cattle, but there was a time when the Holy Spirit just said, just stop. We'd gone through the whole ranch. Our ranch is about 1,500 acres. He said, stop. I, I just want you to pray. So we prayed. And we went back to driving around on our on our ATVs, all terrain vehicles, and and all of a sudden here came this mama walking out of the woods with a newborn calf. And that calf number, the mama's number, we put the same number on the calves, was eight. Never new beginnings. Never beginning, yes. Yeah. Uh, and so we 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 looked at and they looked at it, and they went over there, and all of a sudden both of them started crying and Byron and I were talking and they said, this, this is the heifer that we're looking for. This is her tie. And I, 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 I didn't, couldn't even grasp what was going on, the importance in, in, in the spiritual realm. But they were crying and they said, can we come back? I said, well, sure. Now, Vince, we couldn't show the whole video, but when they came back, they brought 20 different rabbis with them. Hmm. Uh, Dave just missed out on meeting the 20 rabbis. They had gone back like a day before when Dave went out there. But these 20 rabbis came down, and, and some of them were, I guess, physicists that, that needed to do special tests to make sure. One of the crazy things about it was that this was during COVID, and when you ship a, a, a cow anywhere, or if you have them on your property, they have to be tagged they have to have a tag on their ear. Mm -hmm. Well, because of COVID, those rules went away for a short time, and these calves had never been tagged, so without spot or blemish. So there's something good that came out of COVID, I guess, if you look at it like that, but it's very interesting. I found that out today as I was watching the video from Washington, D.C. that they had live, uh, but it, it's just interesting how all the pieces fell into place. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the fact of what they've done before. They, they've done a practice run, okay? okay? So they took a cow that was sick and it was dying already, but it was a full-size regular cow. And they didn't, they didn't do this ceremony where they will do it when the real actual ceremony happens. There's gonna be a clip playing while you're telling us about this, right? Yeah, we're gonna look at the clip, but they, they like you said, they burned the entire cow. So it took nine hours to consume this cow so this is the pit that they dug out. They'll actually have an altar that they'll build uh, when they do this later. But they, they took nine hours to consume the cow and the wood. So you have to consume everything. There's a live shot of it burning. They said that uh, they ended up with 145 pounds of ashes. And then they had to figure out how much water to ash uh, ratio. And they came up with a gram of ash mixed with 1,000 liters of water. Now listen to this. It came out to 
560 billion applications of sprinkling for uh, sanctification. Hmm. 660 billion off of one red heifer. Now say, say that in a different way for us regular folks. What's that mean? They would <laughs> that, be able to use it 660 billion times? Times, yeah. So, okay. so they're going to use that because this is like there's a purification that, that goes on a person before they can go up there. One of the things they've done is they've taken nine. They only need one? Yeah, they, well, they, they need one, one sanctification for this, one, one uh, cleansing of it, right, to go up on the Temple Mount uh, as long as they don't come back in contact with anything dead. Yeah. So they, they've had nine priests that were not born in a hospital. So they weren't around death at all. They've kept these priests guarded, kept them from being around death or anything like that. Those will be able to do the, the ceremony. They'll be able to do that when the time comes. Okay, so it's very interesting. It's interesting that one heifer can do that many applications, that you can have that many applications. I think 660 is just kind of a weird number for us Christians that know about the mark of the beast and stuff, but it's interesting. Well, it's 660 billion. Right. It's not, not quite 666. Six, 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 six. six. Right. So uh, now when they do this, when they actually do the real thing, the, the water from the Gihon Spring will be used as the water, which is significant as well because that feeds uh, the Pool of Siloam which is down at the end of the Temple Mount there at the bottom. And it also feeds into the city of David. So they're going to use the water from the Gihon Spring and then uh, they will go up on the Mount of Olives and that's the place where the sacrifice happens or the ceremony happens. Now this next video clip is really cool. Do we have time to go to it? Yes, we do have time. So this is really cool because it's gonna give you a little bit of information about the land purchase of the Mount of Olives, and then I'll come back and just kind of give you a little story that I learned today. Let's check it out. The ceremony of the red heifer needs to be performed on the Mount of Olives and in a place that would have looked directly into where the temple stood. The land I'm standing on, bought 12 years ago, fits both of those standards. It had to be exactly at the front of place that the priest that made this ceremony can see the holy of the holy place. Rabbi Yitzhak Mamo heads Yuvne, oh. Jerusalem, dedicated to the goal of rebuilding the Third Temple. He owns the land here on the Mount of Olives. And we hope that in a year and a half from today, we can make here in this area the ceremony of the Red Heifer. That actually will be the first step to the Temple. Mamo says the ceremony needs priests who have not been defiled by touching anything dead. The Temple Institute actually has uh, nine pure priests. They didn't born in a hospital, okay, they born at home. Mm -hmm. Because they are priests, so anyway, they don't go to any cemetery, and they are pure, mm -hmm. and they are waiting. They wait. So we have the priest, we have the red heifer, we have the land, and we have everything ready. We just need to wait another one and a half year. Okay, so obviously that was a year and a half ago that this video was made, but he says we've got the priest, we've got the heifers, and we have the land. The, now, now we ahead. still have the heifers, of course. We have right. four. Is it possible that they could develop a blemish between now and Passover? I don't believe so, and I don't think they believe either. I, I think that they're past that point now. Uh, like I said, they were really kosher by September of 2023 uh, around the, the Day of Atonement, around the, the Feast of the Day of Atonement. So they, they've been kosher for a while. They've just been waiting. Now, we got to think back to what happened in October as well. So the Feast of Atonement would have been around that time. or uh, So... You, you got to kind of pull that into play of what's going on and could have delayed this too. But I think that mainly they wanted to wait until Passover because it was a more specific time for this. And we've been talking about it for a while. They've been talking about Passover for this if they stayed uh, blemish free. And Doug, the world government, I can't imagine them wanting something like this to happen. It seems like because of the disruption, because of, I guess, the exclusivity of the Jewish faith, they don't want to allow this to happen. Right. Is that fair? Well, I mean, possibly to a point. I think that if they think that it can help with the peace instead of a war, hmm. that, yeah, they would be okay with it. They might be able to negotiate something that yeah, can work for both sides. Yeah, but because they're afraid of war, yeah. they would be very against this, and, you know, that's going to kind of, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit, well, about how they can lead into in it. In addition to that, I think about 
I mean, 2024, if we're only one month in, and right. there's been so many crazy things happen already, Doug. Yeah. Not to mention there's a presidential election coming. So one thing that, if you're not sure of anything in 2024, uh, you can be sure about the goodness of God 100%, but you can also be sure that it's going to be a turbulent year. You've already seen the impacts of inflation at the pump, the grocery store, the dollar continues to lose buying power quicker than wages can increase. So how are you protecting savings from globalist policies being implemented? Well, consider diversifying with gold from Birch Gold Group. For decades, gold's been the choice of investors and central banks to hedge against inflation and even Temple Institute. Uh, but we'll get into that <laughs> later. Now you can own it in a tax-sheltered IRA with the help of Birch Gold. Just visit birchgold.com slash end time and Birch Gold will send you a free info kit on gold so that you can pray and figure out what's the best decision for you and your family. They'll help you convert an existing IRA and 401k into an IRA in gold. And the best part, you don't have to pay a penny out of pocket. So visit birchgold.com slash end time and secure your savings now. We are taking your calls today. The number to join us is 877-END-TIME, 877-363-8463. We'd love to hear from you, see what you're thinking about the red heifers. And we have a whole lot more to say, Doug. Mm -hmm. Before we get to the calls, uh, there's some interesting stuff about did Islam, did, I guess Hamas, we should say, um, react to um, these red heifers becoming uh, becoming of age is that yeah. part of the motivation? But we'll get into that later. We still have another clip that we don't have time for on this side of the break. Yeah, but real quick before we go to break, let me just tell you about the miracle of what happened with the land. He, he yes. bought uh, an acre of land, and he actually bought it from a Muslim individual 12 years ago. Now, the great miracle about that, Vince, is uh, a Muslim will not sell land to an Israeli, to a Jew at all, because they don't want the Jews there. They believe the Jews are occupying their land, but somehow or another, and he says, Rabbi Mamo says, I don't know how it happened. I mean, I think we understand how it happened, <laughs> but he was able to purchase this acre of land. It just happened to be setting exactly where it needed to set on the temple or the Mount of Olives where you can't buy property because people want to be buried there. They want to be the first ones to rise when Jesus comes back. Well, some red heifer mysteries being revealed. We've got more on the other side of the break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. A voice spoke to me and said, I've got something I want to show you. I was so sure God had talked to me. And I was stunned by what I saw. A direct fulfillment of this over 2,500-year-old prophecy. The United States will stand with Israel. Why haven't I ever seen this before? One third of humanity will die. What do these beasts symbolize? The lion, the bear, the leopard. The combined beast from Revelation 13 represents the end-time government of the Antichrist. Understanding the end time. Now streaming on End Time Plus and available to order at endtime.com slash UET. Go to endtime.com slash UET or call 800 end time. What if you could understand Bible prophecy? Dave Robbins, the host of the End Time Show's TV and radio programs, is holding a free prophecy conference near you. Gain peace and understanding about what the Bible says concerning end time prophecy. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com slash events to see when Dave will be in a location near you. Welcome back to the End Time Show. Vince Stegall here with Doug Norvell. Open lines at 877-END-TIME, 877-363-8463. Today we're revealing some mysteries around the red heifer. We've covered a number of different uh, of those mysteries in the first half hour of the show. And we'll get to a few more here along with your calls. I do want to remind you, Dave and Jana Robbins will be in Justin, Texas this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. You don't want to miss this conference if you're... I don't know, Doug, sometimes people drive eight hours to go to a conference. So if you're within um, any close proximity, you should make plans to come out 
and meet Dave and Jana Robbins there in Justin, Texas. It's first come, first serve on seating, so you could get a front row seat if you get there early enough. You don't have to RSVP, but do go to endtime.com slash in, uh, events, excuse me, endtime.com slash events to get additional details about the venue and such, or you can call us at 800 end time and we'll help you out over the phone. And All if right, you need Doug, a good pair of boots, Justin, Texas is the place to get it. So no you doubt. Can get some boots and go to a conference. He was in Gun Barrel City last week. He's yeah. in Justin, Texas this weekend. Yeah. Maybe Doug need, and maybe Dave, wow. <laughs> maybe Dave needs a pair of boots. Dave does need a pair of cowboy boots. Because, you know, he, if anything, he needs to, you know, at least get a little bit taller. Yeah, because 6'3 or 6'4 didn't talk. Everybody that sees him, they go, whoa, I didn't know you were that big. Right, yeah. <laughs> he needs boots and a big old hat. There you go. He'd be like John Wayne then. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So we've got another clip. Are we ready to go to that, or where are we going from yeah, here? Yeah, so this this is also the end of that interview. This is with Byron Stinson, the man that you know of, and, um, you know, he's been on the program before. So this is a um, just a few-minute clip here of Byron talking about uh, the importance of this and where we're going from here. So, so the red heifer is found that this, this is a command of God. It's not just something that you do. It's actually a command, and the, and the command is to, and Numbers 19 says, to, to say unto Israel to bring us a red heifer. And this red heifer, it goes into the details, but it winds up telling us that this red heifer is for it's, uh, the forgiveness of sin. Now, this all, the red heifer command started just as Israel, uh, after being in captivity and being redeemed from that captivity into the wilderness, this is when God gives this command to Moses to bring this red heifer and to put it right outside the gate. Uh, uh, right out in front of the tabernacle in the front of it and there to burn it completely. It's not really a sacrifice. People think of it as a sacrifice, but this, this is a sin offering that is completely burnt away. But what you do is you have to also add to it, you have to add some ingredients. The ingredients you add are uh, wood from the, the tallest, the biggest, the largest of trees, the cedars of Lebanon. You also add the wood from the smallest, the tiniest, the most humble tree of all, which is the hyssop tree. You have to add the, the red heifer itself, which, which is this large animal that's all red, but you also have to have a little small, tiny red worm that has to go into it. So what's amazing about all these things is they all have to be perfect, but they're also like the largest and the smallest. So it's the alpha and the omega, which I think uh, most of your listeners probably know who that alpha and omega is. And then the red uh, is always representative to me of the blood that that is the atonement for sin. That's what we as Christians are looking to, that blood as our atonement for sin. And this red animal, this red heifer, is God tells us to, uh, to the Jewish fathers of our faith to physically do this as an atonement for sin. Now, most of my Christian friends, because we are so spiritual with our belief and not so physical, most of them can't really see why would we want to do that but for our fathers of faith that we're called to to love and to be friends with and to support, uh, this physical thing is super, super important that they do this because it's the law. It hasn't been done in 2,000 years. This, uh, there, there are a total of nine red heifers have ever been actually sacrificed like this. And then you take the ashes from the red heifer and you add it to the spring water of the Gihon Spring. And you just take a pinch of this ash and put it in 10,000 gallons of water and you can sprinkle with this water and it's for purity on everything. And so this opportunity uh, is now here for a 10th red heifer to come and, and possibly, if it's God's will, in Passover, this coming Passover, that we'll see this, uh, we'll see this uh, in, in, in ceremony. You're referring at. to 2024 yes, Passover. Two, yes, Passover 2024. So Vince, that's where we're headed. 2024, just months away, we could be seeing this happen. And of course, that 10 has a significant number. We'll get into that a little bit more in this next story. But uh, they believe, the Jewish people believe that that tenth heifer, the Messiah, will actually be ushered in. Now, hmm. we know that that's not going to happen with this. We know that it will happen 
at the end of uh, the final seven year period because of Daniel 9 27 we know uh, you know Matthew 24 29 through 31 tells us immediately after the tribulations of those days so we know Christ is going to return then uh, but they're expecting to see a Messiah so it makes sense when you hear things like in Daniel 9 27 when the Antichrist will stand up halfway through the final seven years and say I am God, you need to stop these animal sacrifices and worship me, I'm, I'm your Messiah. Why that would make sense to the Jews, they're looking for this to happen and they believe this 10th red heifer will usher in that Messiah. So it's interesting how their prophecy kind of comes into what we know from the New Testament and from Daniel. Now from what we know in the New Testament, real quick again Doug, because I know people jump in on the stream and or turn the radio on and they get us right here and then they go, well, I thought Jesus died for our sins and that we don't need the red heifer as right. Christians. So right. can we hit that one more time real quick? Yeah, of course, like we, we were saying before, we know that we don't need this. The reason why, I mean, we, we are the temple of God now, that when we become believers in Christ, when we're born again, the Bible says that our bodies are the holy temple and that that's where the Spirit of God dwells. When we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God dwells in us. He doesn't dwell in temples made by hands anymore. The Jews don't recognize Jesus as the Messiah. They're living in the law. And so under the law, to build their temple, they have to go through this purification ceremony. And so it's significant to us because of Scripture where we know there will be a temple. And so that's why it's prophetic and it's significant to that third temple and why it's important to Bible prophecy. All right. Perfect explanation. Um, we're going to get into... Um, how the red heifers might have influenced Hamas and Islam uh, momentarily, but this is such an important part that I think everybody out there needs to hear about. So I wanted to pause real quickly to remind you that we need your help. Share this video. If you didn't share it before, or if you shared it before, share it again right now because we're getting ready to explain how this might be correlated to the Hamas attacks on October 7th. And like I said, everybody out there needs to hear about this. There's major significance in what's coming in God's prophetic time clock. So share the video right now. Uh, give us a heart instead of a thumbs up. And then also comment. Uh, just comment red heifer if you like today's subject. Red heifer. Let's see who all out there um, is interested in this topic because I know it'll help us decide if we talk about it again in the future. So right, absolutely. Uh, comment red heifer if you're down with what we're talking about now. October 7th, Doug, how yeah. do the red heifers have anything to do with that? Well, be before we move into the story, I actually want to remind everybody, we had um, on November 29th, uh, 2023, we had retired IDF uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sarit Zahavi. Zahavi, I guess is how you say That's that. That's good, Doug. Thank you nailed you. it. So uh, she was a uh, military intelligence specialist uh, with the Israeli Defense Force. And we had her on and Vince specifically asked her this question and I just want to show you her reaction to that and just show how either the Jewish people don't understand, some of the Jewish people don't understand, or they try to hide that they understand. So let's look at that clip real quick. We've read articles along the way that propose that it's a result of how close we are to having a red heifer to purify the temple. Um, what's your take on that, if, if any at all? I understand the question. Purify the temple. What does that got to do with what happened in the area of Gaza? Th thank you for reminding Doug. I'm shuddering over here. <laughs> I felt well, very, um, I felt uncomfortable there. Well, yeah. I'm, and I don't normally feel quite that uncomfortable, or at least in that way. Right. So when I ask that question, she stares at me, and I'm just like, Either we're disconnected or she's about to tell me I'm an idiot. <laughs> I don't know which one. So Well, and, um, and the whole thing about that, Vince, is that just goes to show that she doesn't have an understanding of the significance of the Temple Mount. So she is a Jewish person that is probably not even a Jewish believer. She probably doesn't even believe in the Old Testament way. She probably doesn't believe in the law or anything. She just is probably agnostic because she doesn't think that it would have anything to do with it, but. Or she might just not be, I guess what she might call a Zionist. 
Yeah, maybe. She's not yeah. extreme, and so... And, and in her defense, she talked about it being idealism that they were fighting against mm -hmm. and, and training up children to kill Jews regardless. But when you, ha when you look at that, well, why is that ideology there, Vince? It's there because of religion. And, um, and so I just wanted to kind of remind everybody that. And then I wanted to show this because this now, came out on January 25th. You're reminding everyone because she... Is was high up in the IDF, still has connections there. She's in education now in the mm -hmm. country of Israel, yeah. and she's teaching people and says that um, she feels like the solution to resolve this is to educate people properly, and we ask her about that, and she has doesn't think there's any correlation. In fact, uh, the vibe I got was that she found it quite ridiculous that anyone would suggest that. Yeah. But here we are. Yeah. You said that was when? Uh, that was in November 29th when we did that video. And then, now this article came out on the 25th. So it was what, Friday? No, Thursday this article came six out. Six days ago. Yeah. And so, the, the title of it is Hamas spokesman mm -hmm. blames Israel's importing red heifers for October attack. Yeah. Heard it here first on the End Time Show. There you go. There Probably you go. Not, but well, this guy is, uh, he's a military spokesman for Hamas that said this, Abu Abidah. I think that's it, Abu Abidah. There you go. Hey, I have nailed that one too. But as he began listing the motives for October 7th massacre, he said, the aggression against our path of, or our path and the Alaska, meaning the Alaska Mons, uh, reached its peak with the bringing of red cows. Hmm. So he understands, he being a Muslim, understands what that means. It says, too much of the world, uh, too much of the world, such a statement sounds strange, which you saw that with our IDF specialists, as they are not aware of the traditional Jewish beliefs regarding uh, the para abdu, uh, abduma, the red heifers used for purification, the bringing of red cows, which... Uh, Abida was referring to was 2022 arrival of those five red heifers from the Temple Institute in Israel, an organization that established that focuses on establishing the third temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. So here's their fear just without having to read a whole lot. Let me tell you what their fear is. Their fear and the reason why they say they did this is because they believe that Israel's goal is to destroy the Dome of the Rock build their temple on top of the Temple Mount and run the Muslims away, not giving them any kind of authority over that mountaintop at all or, or allowing them to worship in the Alaska Mosque. So remember, the Dome of the Rock is at the place called the Place of the Rock. That's why they call it the Dome of the Rock. And it's supposed to be the original threshing floor that David bought. Okay, so I hear we're up against a break. I guess we'll we'll talk about this a little bit more and then hit the phones after, I guess. Sounds good. And we do have open lines, 877 end times the number to join us, 877-363-8463. We'll be right back. They that understand what is taking place will instruct many. Except a man is born again, he can enter or see the kingdom of God. I don't care what label you've been given or what label you've given yourself, you are essential. You still matter. This is a journey, and when we get to the other side of that, that's where our prize is, that's where our reward is. Time is not going anywhere. Welcome to the End Time Show. Vince Stegall here with Doug Norvell. Again, there are open lines at 877 End Time, 877 363 8463. We'll be getting to the phones momentarily. And in fact, we have 
uh, three open lines. So if you want to be on the show today, uh, give us a call right now and you will most likely get on. We're not going to spend a lot of more time uh, covering any of these points, but we do have some points to uh, finish up. Again, I uh, want to remind you, Dave and Jan will be in Justin, Texas this weekend. Go to endtime.com slash events to learn more about the venue. Also, Doug, this is one of those subjects that an hour is not really long enough. Yeah, that's There's a sure. whole lot more that we have to talk about, mm -hmm. and we could bring in people like Byron Stinson to give us some updates and others. And so, um, and we may do that because we really need to talk about the other issue that I learned today. So, uh oh, yeah. and you're not going to reveal what that other issue no, is? No, I don't think right now. I need to study more about it and find out how real it is. So come back tomorrow, and you might get to <laughs> find out what that other issue is. There you go. Um, but you know, we've talked for a long time, Doug, about doing an extended show on End Time Plus. Mm -hmm. We streamed the first hour on social media and on the radio and everywhere, yep. and then um, we would continue the show on End Time Plus. Well, I regret to inform everyone that that's not going to happen today. But if you oh. want to see something like that happen. Uh, write in time plus in the comments. All you gotta do is say in time and the plus sign. Put that in the comments and let us know if you would even go over there and watch an extended version of the show. Uh, maybe we would go an extra 15 minutes, maybe 30, maybe an hour. Who knows what would happen? Uh, but if you're interested in something like that, let us know in the comments by typing in time plus. And plus, we can be a lot less canted on that. You know, we can talk about. There's no clock. Yeah, that's, that's and, a big part. And we're not being censored as much, so we can kind of talk about things in a different light. If mm. that happens, we'll be able to kind of give what our real opinions are about things. People get on me all the time because they're like, Doug, we know you want to say more. Well, that would give me opportunity to say more. Maybe so. we do a, um, like a behind the scenes show. Yeah, that would be great. For me, you, and Dave, and maybe some other people around here from End Time just sit down, yeah. have a conversation, no clock. We're just streaming on End Time Plus. Yeah. And uh, who knows what we can have. Someone suggested a morning show. Yeah. yeah Wake up that? with Dave, Doug, and Drive Vince. Drive to work listening to the morning show. There you go. <laughs> All right, Doug, I All don't right, want to keep the quick. callers waiting yeah, much yeah. longer, and you have some points to cover real quick right, before so, we move on. So we know there's going to be a temple built, okay, because a lot of people would even argue that, that there's not even going to be a temple built, that it's a spiritual thing, that God's going to bring it down from heaven, all those things. But we know that there will be a physical temple. How do we know that? One place is Daniel 9.27 we talked about before, where there's going to be sacrifices resumed. The Antichrist is going to stand in the middle of the Temple Mount. He's going to declare to be God. That's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 through 4, tells you that information. He will stand in a rebuilt temple there. We also know that the Antichrist does this, this stopping of the sacrifice, because we see it in Daniel 11, uh, verse 30, uh, I think it's 36, it tells us about uh, declaring himself to be above God. I think 30, uh, maybe it's 31 that says that he will stop the animal sacrifices and set up the abomination of desolation. Very specifically talking about the Antichrist there. So several places in Daniel, Daniel 9, Daniel 11, and then 2 Thessalonians. Also, it will not be a situation where they're going to do anything with the Dome of the Rock, we don't believe, because we believe it will be a sharing arrangement. Because of Revelation 11, 1 and 2, where John was told to measure the temple and the worshipers there and the altar. So he's, it's a fully functioning temple. But leave out the outer court for it shall be trodden down the, by the Gentiles for 42 months. That's three and a half years. So in that, in that part of the final seven-year period, there will be a temple. It will be a sharing arrangement. The, uh, the outer court will be given to the Gentiles. And remember, part of the peace plan of the Abraham Accord is that all um, religions should be able to worship upon that temple mount with respect to all the other religions. So it won't just be Muslim Jewish faiths worshiping there. It will be a place for all faiths. So that's going to happen according to what Bible prophecy tells us. So I didn't want to leave it without telling you that uh, that's how we know there will be a temple. We know that there will be a physical temple. And we wanted to prove that Hamas's main reason for the attacks on Israel were because of the red heifers and their fear that Israel would destroy the Dome of the Rock and the al Mosque. So it's right there in black and white. It's in that article. And that is a Hamas leader saying that. So just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. These red heifers are a huge prophetic situation. 
All right, we ready to go to the phones? Let's do it. All right, we are going to start in Missouri. Roman is watching there. Roman, welcome to the End Time Show. Hello. Hi, Roman. How you doing? I, I want to make a comment that ties all this together. I read an article last week, and it pertained to Saudi Arabia, which is a mortal enemy of Iran. But they were talking to somebody. I read the article, so they were talking to somebody in, in the Israeli government, and they were coming up and said, we can stop this war with Hamas if you guys would agree to the two state solution and then saudi arabia will recognize israel and they're a big player in that area with people looking with the abraham accords you got what four or five countries now if they were able to pull that off stop this war and have a peace agreement we only have to get to that point where we start having the sharing of the temple mount and starting of the temple and I'm looking at that seven year period. I mean this made yes. the hair stand up on the back of my neck when I read this. Okay. So uh, apparently our our phone lines are not picking up for the program. So uh, we're sorry about that but the question was or the statement was about Saudi Arabia um, going to make an agreement with Israel that they could if the war would stop with Hamas that they would normalize uh, a peaceful solution with Israel and bring about a signing of a peace agreement there. So that that's true, and we've seen those articles, and so we know that that is a fact and something that's going to happen. So um, the the situation there is we've seen many people talk about that, that if Israel would go ahead and they would end this um, this war with Hamas right now in Gaza, that if they would pull back and come back to the tables, that the, everybody would allow this to kind of become a thing, but Israel would have to agree on a two-state solution. Now, Vince, we've always believed that was going to happen because of what Scripture says in Matthew 24, 15 through 21 about Judea and let the settlers there in Judea flee into the mountains because there's going to be great tribulation. So we've always understood there would be a two-state uh, solution. Right now, uh, Netanyahu says absolutely not. We can't do it. There's no way because you see what they do when we give them something. Look at how they respond and look at how they treat us. So right now Netanyahu says no, that's not going to happen. But there is a movement right now within the Knesset where they are talking about trying to get some people who are more forward thinking in there and get Netanyahu out again. So this is something that they're actually talking about because there are people within the Knesset who say we could give them a two-state solution. We could bring this to, to play. Well, you're going to see the world community push that now. Remember, we've talked about this. And so that is a very real thing, and I believe it's going to happen. Uh, and so we'll just have to watch. But remember also, Saudi Arabia was very close to a normalization deal with Israel when this war started. They were real close. And, and at first we thought, well, that's why they've done this, is to stop that peace treaty. Well, that is part of it, because they have the red heifers, and they were getting a peace treaty with Saudi Arabia, who's very powerful in the Middle East. And the next thing they would do is that third temple, and the Muslims know it. So that's kind of where we are right now. I don't know if our phones are we, phones we were back told up or The phones we're weren't working okay. properly. All right. um, so I know that people on uh, Facebook were hearing it, so I'm not sure... Okay. what's happening so we had to cut Roman off and we're gonna try it again and see what happens so if you can't hear uh, the caller let us know in the comments if you can I guess let us know about that as well we're gonna try Texas now Andrew's watching there Andrew welcome to the end time show yeah hello brothers uh, I just had a couple of questions here um, about the red heifers I noticed that in, in numbers 19 it talks about the significance of the red heifer is being used in uh, traditionally cleansing processes, but I would love to hear y'all's explanation and go into detail as to why this is more significant than a lamb sacrifice. And I would really just, I can go ahead and hang up and love to hear y'all's uh, discussion of that. All right. Well, thank you, Andrew. We appreciate your call. The, the difference here is this is, um, this is for a complete cleansing of 
all of Israel. And so what they're going to do is they will be able to use these ashes for many years from now. And what they're going to do is people that will go up on the Temple Mount for whatever reason they're going up there, they'll need to be sprinkled with this cleansing if they've come in contact with a dead body or anything like that. Uh, anything unclean, they'll have to go through a purification of these uh, red heifer ashes with the wood and everything mixed. The difference there is, is this is for like the cleansing of all the Jewish people going up on the Temple Mount. When they would do a, a lamb, that would be for the atonement of their sins. They would bring that once a year at Passover. Uh, they would introduce that uh, and then the, the blood from that animal would cover them for that year. They'd have to keep going back and doing it year after year, uh, which is, you know, when you read, when you get into Hebrews and you begin to read Hebrews, you see how Jesus was the perfect sacrifice that he came one time for all time. And anybody who's been baptized into Jesus have been baptized into this new life and all your sins are forgiven from his blood because he was the perfect spotless lamb of God. And so that's the difference. This is a significant thing just for the Temple Mount really right now for the rebuilding of that temple. And until they get that temple, they can't even start those yearly sacrifices with lambs and doves and things like that. Good explanation, Doug. Um, last week was my wife and I's wedding anniversary. Yes. And I don't think we're going to have time to get to any other callers, so sorry about that. But I did want to mention, um, because I forgot that we haven't been on the show since then, but mm -hmm. we were out to dinner, and uh, as we're walking out of the restaurant, there's a guy there, and he says, Vince? And I'm like, yes. And he's like, man, I watch you guys every... <laughs> he said, he said I, I watch you, and uh, or I listen to you, Dave and Doug, every single night pretty much, uh, and it's my quiet time as I'm uh, getting ready for bed, and so I apologize to his wife who was sitting there with him that <laughs> she has to endure that, but yeah. uh, shout out to Brandon from the McKinney area. Um, he apologized for stopping us, but we love it when people stop and talk to us, and yeah. uh, we always have a good time with everybody out there who follows the show, and so if you ever see us out, we're happy to chat. Yeah, we're very approachable. Unless people. you're crazy, then, yeah. you know. Well, no. even if you're crazy, we like, I'll talk to you. We're crazy, guys. too. So I like crazy. <laughs> we're a little crazy. So um, we always appreciate it when uh, when we get to talk with people who, he's been following since 1999, he says, listened on the radio. Wow. And uh, so it was good to meet Brandon and his family. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's always nice to meet people one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I mean, that's the great thing about being able to go to the conferences and things like that, yep. is being able to meet people that listen to the program and be able to talk with them and share stories with them. Because, you know, I'm a lot like they are. I mean, I started listening to Irvin Baxter way back in the day, too. And, uh, you know, so it's great to, to meet people like that. So if you ever see me out there, say hi. You just make sure you don't call me Vince or Dave. So. Well. At least they got he your called name my right. name. He did know, call he me by your name, name right. so that was that was <laughs> rare. But uh, nonetheless, that was cool. But uh, Doug, Dave's going to be teaching on uh, the Green Horseman and World War III this weekend in Justin, Texas. Yeah, um, it would appear from what we've talked about here today that you're pretty convinced that part of their motivation for what they did on October seventh has to do with the Red Heifers. Is that correct? Absolutely. And their main goal is to drive Israel completely out of the land. They, they don't want any peace agreements. They don't want Israel to have access to that Temple Mount at all. And do you think that uh, this is World War III that we're seeing right now, according to Bible prophecy? It could definitely be that, Vince. I, I'm not ready to say that we're in World War III right now, but man, I'm watching it every day for some kind of understanding of where we are exactly. Do you think they're going to sacrifice that red heifer this year? I do. I do think that's going to happen. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, my. All right. Well, if you enjoyed today's show, again, comment Red Heifer. Let us know that you like this type of topic. We'll cover it again soon. Uh, don't forget to go to endtime.com and watch that endtime.com to participate. Thousands of hours of content that's made totally free because of generous partners like you. You can go to endtime.com slash give to help to continue to make this show free. Um, we'll see you right back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central Time.